In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Nintendo Switch emulator called Kenji NX. This is a fork of Ryu Jinx. Okay, let's head over to the Kenji official GitHub page. I will leave the link to this page in a pinned comment below. Once you are here, look over to the right and you will see releases and click right here. The latest release as the recording of this video is 2.0.3. If we scroll down, under assets, you will find your downloads. This emulator is available for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Since I am on Windows, I'm gonna click right here for Win X64, and your download should start. Also, the program I prefer to use to extract my files is 7-Zip. We would need this program to extract the emulator as well as any Switch ROMs you may have. I have moved the emulator file to my desktop. Now we need to extract it and this is where we're gonna use 7-Zip. If you have 7-Zip installed, all you need to do is right click on the file, go to show more options, 7-Zip, and extract to Ryu Jinx. This is gonna create a new folder containing all of your extracted files. We no longer need the zip file, so we can go ahead and right click and delete it. Also, to get this emulator up and running, you're gonna have to have your keys. And for the best compatibility, you wanna have an updated firmware file, which I have both of those files in this folder here, I named keys. Now I am sorry, I cannot tell you here where to get these two files, but if you check out my Patreon page, link in the description below, I will have a video there that can help you out. Now just like the emulator, your prod keys will have to be extracted. You will not have to extract the firmware. So let's go ahead and right click on prod keys, show more options, 7-zip, and this time extract here. And delete the zip file. And I have a folder here with two Switch ROMs in it. Now, once again, I cannot tell you where to get Switch ROMs, but if you check out my Patreon page, I will have some videos there that can help you out. Also, once you get your Switch ROMs, make sure they are extracted to become playable, that being either a NSP file type or a XCI file type. Now let's go ahead and open that Ryu Jinx folder. And this file here is the actual emulator. Now the first thing we're gonna do is install our keys. So let's go up to the top left corner, click on file and open Ryu Jinx folder. Then you wanna go to system. Now you're already gonna see some prod keys and title keys in this folder. You wanna go ahead and highlight everything here and delete it. And now I'm gonna open up my folder on my desktop containing my extracted keys, open that folder and inside of that folder, you should see prod.keys and title.keys. We wanna drag both of these files into that system folder. Now we're gonna install our updated firmware file. Let's go up to tools, install firmware, install a firmware from XCI or zip. Go ahead and locate the folder containing the firmware, select the file, and as the recording of this video, the latest firmware is 19.0.1. And as you see right here, this will replace the current system version 17.0.1. Yes, to install. Successfully installed, okay. Now let's go up to options, settings, under game directories, go ahead and click on add. Then locate the folder containing your Switch ROMs, in my case on my desktop. Now come down to the bottom right and click on apply. And if we exit out of the screen for a minute, now you can see our two games have been added to the emulator. Now let's go back up to options, settings. Now I don't have any update files or DLC, but if you do have some, I recommend having them in a separate folder from your games. And to add those files to the emulator, you come down here, click on add and select the folder. Now let's go down to input. Now I am using an Xbox Series X controller with this emulator. You can also use a PS5 controller as well as a Switch Pro controller. Now these are the only three controllers I have tested with this emulator and they all work. The emulator will also map your buttons out for you. Any other controller you may have, you will have to test it out for yourself. So I'm gonna come over here to input device and I'm gonna select my Xbox Series controller. 
and as you see once i selected that controller it mapped it out for me now of course if you're not happy with any of these buttons then you can change them all you would do is click on the button you want to change and then hit whatever button on your controller to change it then come over here to the right and click on save profile now if you want to set up multiple controllers then come up here to player and you can repeat the same thing for player two three and four we are done with our controller come down to apply now click on keyboard hotkeys now we don't have a lot of hotkey options but this is what we do have and if you want to change any of these mappings then you can do that here now let's come down to graphics now for the graphics back in, I prefer to use Vulkan for the best performance. Now if your PC has an older CPU and graphics card, then you may find better performance with OpenGL. But I recommend trying out Vulkan first. Make sure that your preferred GPU is set to your graphics card and not your CPU. Under resolution scale, you can bump this up all the way to 4K, but once again, make sure you have a pretty decent graphics card and CPU, because if you don't, you will experience some lag and stutter. Now you will notice you're seeing two resolutions. The resolution on the left is in handheld mode and the resolution on the right is dock mode. So what you wanna pay attention to is the resolution on the right. Now since my monitor is only 1080p, I'll just leave it at 1080p. For the anisotropic filtering, this will make your textures look a lot cleaner in game. You do not even have to change this, but I prefer to do at least two times to make those textures look a little bit better. We are done here, come down to apply and okay. And now we can go ahead and load up a game. Just click on the game you wanna play and it will load up in full screen. Now, if it does not load up in full screen, you can just hit the F11 key and it will take you back to Windows. You hit F11 again, and you go back into full screen. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already.